Hi there. Well, you guessed it. It's time for a bit of a shootout between two of the best Windows 8 tablets that are now available in Australia. Here we have the Samsung ATIV Smart PC Pro. Competing against it, we've got the Fujitsu Q702 Stylistic tablet. So I'll start off with the similarities between the two tablets. Firstly, we've got an 11.6 inch screen on both devices. We've got a hybrid docking keyboard with some extra features like USB ports. So we can just simply click on a button and remove the tablet from the keyboard itself. In both cases, all of the smarts are built into the tablet and the keyboard is really there, just there as an accessory. Both have global 3G modems inbuilt so that you can run here on the local networks Telstra, Vodafone, Optus. Performance wise, it would be really hard to pick anything between the two. They're really built from the same components. Intel Core i5, 4GB of RAM, 256GB drives. They're basically the same. Both are fully Windows 8 compatible. Both have webcams on the front. Both tablets have very similar 5 megapixel cameras built into the back of the tablet. And that's great for documentation and field work. But let's go into some of the differences between the two. The first thing is that the Fujitsu has an inbuilt battery in the keyboard. So that means that I get an extra 6 hours of battery life out of this tablet because of the battery in the keyboard. Alternately, I can simply shut the lid put the tablet to sleep and the tablet and the keyboard battery will start charging the tablet battery back up. So that's a really good design feature that the Samsung doesn't have. Additionally, the Fujitsu comes with Ethernet built into the keyboard there and VGA on the other side. Both tablets have the ability to plug power directly in through the keyboard and in the Fujitsu's case that allows you to charge both the keyboard and the tablet battery up together. So in effect on both, you can use the keyboard as a bit of a desktop docking station. With the design of the Fujitsu, having the battery in the keyboard means that the keyboard is a little bit weightier. Now that's a good thing when you're using this in laptop mode because it allows you to orient the screen much further back and the tablet won't easily flip over. It won't overbalance. Whereas with the Samsung, they've deliberately limited the, uh, the angle that I can push the screen back and that's because with a light keyboard it's much more likely that the Samsung is going to overbalance. So moving on to the screens as you can see they're both roughly the same size 11.6 inch screens. They also have roughly the same brightness they're probably using the same screen panel which is a 400 nit brightness panel both have very wide viewing angles both are very pleasant on the eye. The Samsung is much more reflective than the Fujitsu and that can cause problems in bright environments but that also means that it is a little bit more attractive to look at. One key difference between the screens is the screen resolution and to demonstrate that I'm going to go into desktop mode. Now the Samsung has a 1920 by 1080 high definition screen whereas the Fujitsu has a 1366 by 768 screen. Now I've deliberately turned this screen here into its native resolution so that you can see that all of the items on screen, things like the little close buttons and title bars in Windows, the start bar itself is much much smaller on the Samsung than it is on the Fujitsu. With the high definition screen you'll see much better clarity in high definition photos and things like that, high definition videos. Occasionally you may run into trouble with legacy applications that don't support font scaling, you'll definitely want to blow up the fonts on this tablet to about 150% of what they normally are just to make them readable for the average person on the screen because it's so small. But that really only applies to desktop mode but it is something to think about. Another thing to think about on the tablet itself is actually this security feature. On the Fujitsu we have a fingerprint reader there on the Samsung we don't have that option. Now if you're logging on and off of your tablet all the time, if you're letting it go to sleep and you have your tablet in a secured corporate environment you're going to have to be typing that password in constantly. What the fingerprint reader allows you to do is just to simply swipe your finger through to log on. Now that's much more secure than any of the other authentication methods that are out there. Another thing that's worth considering between the two tablets is the inbuilt digitizer pen systems. Fujitsu 
have gone with this Entrig pen. The pen system itself actually has a battery in it. It's run on a 4A battery which I'll just pop out here. These pens are relatively inexpensive to acquire and replace and they do have a spot built into the keyboard on the Fujitsu to store that pen. The Intrigue pen is pressure sensitive and it's also proximity sensitive so I don't actually have to touch the screen. It will work just like a mouse. It's got a right click button on the side of the pen. On the other hand Samsung has a Wacom active digitizer pen built right into the tablet here. It's the S Pen style, same as what you'll find on the Galaxy Note phones and tablets. It's got a spongy tip on it, but that can be replaced with a hard plastic tip because you'll find that these spongy tips wear down very quickly. In general terms, you'll find that the Wacom pen is much nicer to write with. It has a much nicer feel about it. However, the one drawback with the Wacom pen is that it does need calibration, and particularly on a screen of, of this size, this one's not too bad, but there will be a little variation of where the dot meets the pen tip. It's very fast and responsive, and that's again courtesy of a similarity between the two tablets which is that Intel Core i5 processor. It's third generation on both tablets which means that these are very powerful machines. In terms of touch responsiveness, well both tablets they really feel identical in that regard. Taking a look at the back of the tablet, one of the things that I really noticed about the Samsung that I find is a little bit of a drawback is this finish that's on the front and the back of the tablet. It really attracts fingerprints and I found that within a couple of hours it was really filthy and needed a good clean up. Whereas the matte finish again on the Fujitsu doesn't get anywhere near as dirty as quickly. Both tablets have really good case options like the Fujitsu stylistic case. Samsung have a similar case called the grip assist case. As opposed to the Fujitsu, the design of the keyboard on the Samsung will really prevent it from being used with any type of case. Um, you'll have to remove the case in order to click the tablet into the keyboard whereas Fujitsu have done something really clever and they've actually designed the stylistic case to accommodate the keyboard so we don't need to remove that case in order to click the keyboard in. And lastly just a review of some of those ports that are on the tablet. The Fujitsu you've got a USB 2 port and a HDMI port that's a full-sized HDMI Whereas on the Samsung, we only have a micro HDMI, and that's just on the side here. On, back on the Fujitsu, we've got a USB 3 port, as well as an audio in and out port. On the Samsung, we just simply have a USB 3 port in the top here that's protected by a little cover. And we've got a combined audio in and out port. Both tablets are fully BitLocker capable. They both have TPM chipsets in them for corporate security. What really differentiates the two tablets though is the security and mobility features that are in the Fujitsu. Things like the battery built into the keyboard of the Fujitsu make it really stand apart. As well as the VGA connection on the side, the Ethernet connection on the side of the keyboard, as well as the full-size HDMI port, USB 2 and 3 ports on that tablet as well. So in terms of connectivity, the Fujitsu really has it all over the Samsung. And when you throw in security features like the fingerprint reader on the back of the Fujitsu, that makes a much more compelling case for a corporate deployment. Now, of course, both tablets run Windows 8 Professional, but the Fujitsu can also run Windows 7, which is a key differentiator. The Samsung the Adiv does not support Windows 7 at all, it's purely a Windows 8 tablet. So if you're running an existing Windows 7 environment and you want a tablet to fit in with that, well, the Q702 is really a good choice. If you're looking for a tablet that's predominantly for your own personal use or for home use, then you'd have no regrets in purchasing the Samsung. It's a really beautiful tablet and I can highly recommend it. However, if you're deploying tablets in a corporate network or in a corporate environment, Security is much more important to you, as well as the ability to run Windows 7 and lots of legacy applications, then the Fujitsu Q702 is really where it's at. It's really important to note that with both of these tablets we've got 256 gigabytes of storage, solid state storage in either tablet. We've got 3G options built in. Now a lot of people out there are really caught up in the uh, Microsoft Surface tablet, which is a really nice tablet 
However, it doesn't have either of those features. Its largest drive size is 128 gig. It doesn't have 3G options inbuilt in the tablet like these two do. And we consider those things to be really important to push the boundaries of tablet computing. So I just want to make an important point there that it's not just Microsoft who are pushing the tablet forward under Windows 8. Samsung, Fujitsu, Asus, Acer, many other manufacturers are really getting behind the tablet platform with some innovative and interesting high-end tablet designs that will completely change the way you think about tablets and laptops.